Welcome to r slash am I the butthole, where I'm pretty sure that OP is secretly dealing drugs. Am I the butthole for wanting my neighbor to remove her ring doorbell? I've been living in my apartment complex for two years, and it's been wonderful. Recently, a young woman moved in across from my apartment. We introduced briefly, and apart from the noise made when she was having movers bring in her things, she's been quiet and polite. However, there's one thing that bothers me. She has a ring doorbell on her door. Recently, I saw her leaving, and I asked her why she had it and that I was worried that she could see me in my apartment. She said that she had it for packages and there wasn't a peephole on the door, so it's just extra security. She showed me that, yes, it can see my door a bit, but she assured me that she's not on her phone all day checking it. I expressed my discomfort and asked her to remove it. She told me that she was sorry I was uncomfortable, but she wasn't spying on me and she had a right to have one up. She wasn't breaking her lease, and she had seen other people in the complex have one too. I told her I don't care about other people. I want it gone or I'll be reporting her. She told me not to bother and called our property manager regarding it, because I got a visit from our property manager telling to leave her and the doorbell situation alone. Am I really out of line for this? OP, man, the hypocrisy. How can someone write a post like this and not realize that the things that they're typing Typing, typing, typing is in direct contradiction to the things that they're saying. You told her, oh, I don't care about other people. Okay, so why the f should she care about you? <laughs> Down in the comments, C Perspective says, why does this feel like one of those tell me you're dealing drugs without telling me that you're dealing drugs scenarios? You're the butthole. Yeah, I agree with that commenter. OP, you're definitely the butthole here. Leave her alone. Besides, if your packages get stolen or someone breaks down the front door of your apartment and steals all your stuff, I can guarantee you that the very first person you're going to talk to is your neighbor and say, um, excuse me, remember me, neighbor? I was wondering if I could see your footage because I really, really need it now. And actually, maybe a ring doorbell isn't so bad. OP, I'm giving you 1.5 out of 5 buttholes. Leave her alone. I'm giving your neighbor 0 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for not wanting my husband to walk his sister down the aisle? My husband Mike, who's 37, is the oldest sibling in his family. He's pretty close with his sister Beth, who's 28, and they spend almost all week together. Beth had issues with her father growing up. She went no contact with him after he took her first car and damaged it. She only remained in contact with Mike since everybody else judged her for going no contact. Beth is getting married to her fiancé of three years. From what I understand, she and her dad are slowly getting reconciled, but she made it clear that she wants him to take no part in the wedding. She asked Mike if he could walk her down the aisle, and he agreed. I have to say that I was taken aback, and it felt a bit odd for me because her dad's alive. They're on speaking terms again. He is going to be there at the wedding, so the logical thing to do is to have him walk her down the aisle. This role isn't for her older brother, but her father. Not to mention, how will her father-in-law feel about it? I brought this up with Beth, and she had an attitude, and implied that I was just saying this and objecting because of how I feel about the situation, not about how our tradition should be practiced. We got into an argument and I went home. Mike thinks that I'm being unreasonable and possibly causing him to miss something so sentimental, and that, if anything, he feels honored to be asked to do this for her, and said that I should stop worrying about what others might say. Now, the three of us are having a conflict, and we can't seem to reach a solution. Um, okay, I'm confused about this post. Because your sister-in-law's right, OP. You are clearly upset about this, but I don't understand why. Because fundamentally, you have no horse in this race. It, it shouldn't matter to you whether her dad walks her down the aisle or her brother or no one walks her down the aisle. It has like no real bearing on your life whatsoever. If anything, your brother's right. It is an honor that she asked him to do it. So like, why do you care so much? Why are you so uptight about it? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. There's some secret reason that you're upset about that you're not telling us, the people reading on Reddit, and you're not telling your husband or your sister-in-law. But clearly, there's a secret hidden reason of why this is bothering you. OP, I'm giving you one out of five buttholes because you're sticking your nose into someone else's business when, really, this doesn't have anything to do with you. I'm guessing, I mean, if I just had to guess, it's jealousy. You're jealous that your husband is being involved in another woman's wedding, but it's, it's his sister. Like, you get that, right? And if it's not jealousy, what reason could OP have? This post is confusing me. 
If anyone has 200 IQ out there who's listening to this story, let me know down in the comments what OP is so uptight about because something about this just doesn't add up. I think it's jealousy. It's got to be jealousy, right? Am I the butthole for leaving my sister and her husband on the side of the road? I come from a very sex-positive household. My parents taught my sister and I about sex, sexuality, and their non-vanilla lifestyle from a young age. They were very affectionate and touchy with each other in public, and they don't seem to care about others' opinions. They lived a very non-conventional lifestyle, and they weren't afraid to flaunt it. On one hand, my parents never treated sex as a shameful subject. Therefore, I received a very comprehensive and inclusive form of sex education. On the other hand, I think I was introduced to many topics at a very young age. In many ways, my sister Angie turned out like my parents. She proclaims that she's sex positive and has no qualms openly discussing sex in great detail at every opportunity. She believes that if a person is uncomfortable, they might be a conservative virgin or prude who clearly hates all form of self-expression. My wife, Zara, isn't a huge fan of public displays of affection. Other than hand-holding or occasional kisses on the cheek, she isn't comfortable with doing much in public. We're also not the type of people to discuss our sex life with people, much less family. Angie does not like Zara. She believes that Zara is too conservative and prudish for our family. She often makes fun of Zara for looking embarrassed when she's discussing, in excruciating detail, about sex. Zara barely says anything, but Angie still manages to make fun of her. I don't speak to Angie much. Recently, Zara's brother passed away. Angie's husband, Bill, knew him and wanted to pass on his condolences. Zara, Angie, Bill, and I all wanted to attend his wake. Instead of taking separate cars, Angie suggested that we all go together. To be honest, I was not a huge fan of this idea. It was a two-hour drive from where we lived to our destination. Also, we were planning on leaving very early so that we could help set up and were planning to leave late. But still, we all took the same car. At first, everything was alright. Understandably, no one was speaking in the car and it was very quiet. Most people just kept to themselves or slept. Midway through the drive, Angie and Bill started making out in the backseat of our car. And when I say making out, I mean full on making out. They were... <laughs> they were pushing up against the car door and making all sorts of noises. Zara and I were extremely uncomfortable. I pulled over the car and started yelling at Angie. I told them that I was disgusted by their behavior and that they were acting like horny little teenagers. Angie said <laughs> Angie said that they were grieving. I yelled at them to get out of my car. At first they protested, but I was so angry and so tired of them already. I told them to find their way home by themselves. My parents think that I went too far with them and that Zara needs to loosen up to be part of this family. Obviously, Angie and Bill are still extremely pissed. And to be clear, when I initially pulled over, I pulled over into a small gas station that had a little cafe. So saying side of the road was a poor choice of words. Okay, I'm going to read this reply from Jaqui down in the comments because they say this way better than I could have. Not the butthole. Sex positive means valuing consent, communication, and being free to make informed choices about your body without feeling judgment or shame. Nothing about what your sister is doing is sex positive. Continuing to discuss your sex life to someone in great detail when they've expressed this makes them uncomfortable is not the way. Making out in a car with other people who are clearly not consenting to that is odd. Sounds like someone needs to go and watch Tea and Consent. And like, yeah, there's definitely this whole issue of like consenting to them making out in the back seat. But then there's this whole second layer of, is this really the most appropriate time to make out when you have a woman who's grieving over the death of her brother? Like, why is it that you're supposed to accommodate your sister's horniness, but your sister isn't willing to accommodate your wife's grieving? I mean, yeah, everyone grieves in their own way, I guess. But still, shouldn't the priority go to Zara, who lost her brother? OP said that Angie's boyfriend knew the guy who passed away, which to me implies they were like acquaintances or maybe friends. But still, wouldn't you expect the brother-sister relationship to kind of transcend most other relationships? So I really feel like Zara should be the one that everyone is, oh, Zara, so sorry for your loss. Is there anything I can do to support you? Just let me know and I'm happy to help. Not... <coughs> 
Don't shame me just for making out with my boyfriend in the backseat of your car while driving to your dead brother's wake. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I think what you did was a great example of supporting your spouse. I'm giving Angie and her boyfriend 2 out of 5 buttholes. Gross, man. At this point, Angie's not being sex positive. She's being an exhibitionist. Am I the butthole for telling my husband to get over himself when he started berating me for not picking up his brother's son from school? My husband's 37. He took in his 12-year-old nephew after his dad, my husband's brother, was diagnosed with cancer. He told me that his nephew would be staying with us until his dad completes his chemo treatment. I agreed, although he didn't consult me about it first. But I told him that he'll be his responsibility, not mine. He asked me to explain why, and I told him it's because, one, he didn't consult me before taking his nephew in, and two, I'm not equipped nor experienced in taking care or being committed to childcare. I still have to cook and clean, obviously. He said that it was fine and that he'd be taking care of him on his own. The other day, he called me in the afternoon saying that he was stuck in a two-hour meeting and asked if I could pick up his nephew from school. I said that I was having lunch with mom and discussing family issues. He insisted, but I reminded him that he said that he'd be taking care of his nephew, including school pickup and drop-off. I suggested he try to get off work or call some family member to go pick him up. He tried to argue, but I hung up. I went home at 3 and, surprisingly, found my husband there. He was angry. He started yelling at me, calling me selfish and unfeeling. I told him that his lack of management wasn't my fault. He yelled saying that my lunch with mom could have effing waited, but I chose to be effing petty just to prove a point. I said that wasn't true, and I told him to get over himself and stop acting like he was the victim when he put himself in the situation knowing that he couldn't commit. He yelled that he was trying to do all he could to help his brother out, but it was me who's playing victim after I refused to help out. We argued some more, and I ended up going to stay with my mom for the night. He texted me some choice words, and that's when I turned my phone off. We're still arguing about it. Oh, man. OP, I'm with your husband on this one. You're cold, heartless, and petty. You keep calling the nephew your husband's nephew, but it's your nephew because you're married to your husband. So by marriage, that makes the kid your nephew. And like, yeah, I can understand why you're less invested in the kid than your husband is. Like, that's kind of obvious. It makes sense. But clearly, you want nothing to do with this kid, and you're trying to punish your husband. You can't do it because you're so busy, what, cooking and cleaning? And I'm guessing you guys don't have kids, so you're busy cooking and cleaning for a household of an adult man and an adult woman? Too busy having luncheons with your mom to help out? OP, you're turning your back on your husband, who needs your help, your own nephew, who may lose his dad, and your brother-in-law, who's dying of cancer. I don't think me telling you that you're wrong is going to make any difference to you because based on this story, you sound really, really heartless. And to be perfectly honest, I feel bad for your husband because I don't think that you're a good person. I mean, yeah, we can kind of give your husband a butthole score too for making this decision without consulting you first. But based on what I've read on this story, I really don't think that if he had done that, this story would have gone any differently. I still think you would have turned your back on your husband and been a cold, heartless, uncaring person about it. I'm giving your husband 0.5 out of 5 buttholes for not consulting you first. I'm giving you 3 out of 5 buttholes for just being an all-around bad person. Like, honestly, OP, what's the point of being married if you're not willing to sacrifice one lunch to help your husband out? Am I the butthole for telling my mother-in-law that once she reads up on basic 6th grade biology, she's free to give me a call and apologize? I'm a 28-year-old woman, and I've been married to my husband, Cam, who's 32, for two years. We've been together for four years total. He was a friend of my older brother, so I've known him even longer. Cam and I decided to try for a baby, and now I'm currently 20 weeks pregnant with our first baby. When we told my mother-in-law the news, the first thing she mentioned was that every woman in the family had a son before they had a daughter, so she thought the baby would be a boy. Cam and I told her that we didn't care what we were having, we just wanted a happy and healthy child. Well, I'm having a girl, and we informed my mother-in-law of this earlier in the evening. My mother-in-law immediately seemed upset at this, and she told me that next time I need to try harder to give my husband a son. I laughed and said that I didn't really have much of a choice in the matter, so if and when we have another child, there's nothing I could do to make sure we had a boy then either. She said that it was my fault because she had a boy first and all of her other son's wives had boys first, so it meant that I was the odd one out. 
Cam told his mom that he didn't care about having a son or not, and that she needed to stop blaming me for something that couldn't possibly be my fault. But then, she started getting on to him about how he should want a child who can carry on the family name instead of a daughter that'll just be given away. The whole thing was absolutely ridiculous! So I told her that, once she looks into getting a refresher course and reading up on basic biology she should have learned in 6th grade, she's free to give me a call and apologize for being absolutely ridiculous. My husband and I left after that, and in the car, he said that while he understood my frustration, he didn't appreciate me speaking to his mother like that, because I basically implied that she was an idiot. I told him that I didn't appreciate the way that she was speaking to me, and that he should be upset on behalf of our daughter since his mom clearly seems to think less of our child before she's even born. The rest of the car ride was silent, and honestly, we haven't talked since getting back home either. He did defend me to her, so I know that he's on my side, but I know that he wouldn't have brought up the way that I spoke to her unless he thought that I was really out of line. I feel like a bit of a butthole now, and I'm not sure if I should apologize to her or not. OP, I completely agree with you on this one. Your husband should be upset at his mom because she insulted both you and his unborn child. And on top of that, she's just plain wrong. Like, you implied she's an idiot? No, she actually is an idiot. All you did was point it out. This is like a well-known, common fact. Like, what is this woman living in like the 14th century? Newsflash, lady. The earth revolves around the sun, the world is round, and the father determines the gender of the baby, not the mother. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving your husband 1 out of 5 buttholes for only kind of sticking up for you, and I'm giving your mother-in-law 2 out of 5 buttholes. That was our slash am I the butthole, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.